We assume that Ansible's already been installed. So because it's been installed, we can work with Ansible code and all of the modules like the template module is already available to us on our system. Let's go ahead and cat out here. Um, the first file we want to look at, which is called our host file, our inventory. Um, actually, it's called Futurama Crew in this case, because we can call it anything we want. It's just an inventory. It describes to Ansible what it's going to go configure. I have three real systems here, Bender, Fry, and Zoidberg. And I think the parameters I have filled in speak for themselves. IP addresses to SSH2 and the users to SSH um, when you, the, the <laughs> username to use when you create the SSH connection. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's try Zoidberg here. 10.10.2.5. And indeed, he's an Ubuntu 18.04 system. Uh, I'm feeling good about this. He's going to be one of my targets. Oh, by the way, um, when I go in there, um, the template module's purpose is I'm going to create, oh, like a fill in the blanks type uh, module, a fill in the blanks type document, excuse me. Ansible's going to fill it out and then move it into this system for me. Uh, so I want to definitely take a look here. If it exists, I want to remove it. There is, I want to go ahead and remove rmship.cfg. And let's go into station docs. Okay, nothing in there. Um, and one more time, ls. All right, all I have is a folder called station docs in Zoidberg here. And just for fun, let's go ahead and as well SSH into... Uh, Bender is a good one. Let's go to Bender at 10.10.2.3. And he has a ship.cfg, so let's remove ship.cfg. It's gone. And here's the neat thing. We're going to leave that file on the fry machine. So if you look here in the Planet Express group, there's a machine called fry, 10.10.2.4. This will be great, great training. We're going to leave ship.cfg on the fry machine. That'll be cool. All right, very cool. So we have our inventory set up. We can SSH into our target systems. We see two of those systems don't have a ship.cfg on it, and one does. The fry machine does. So let's go ahead now and look at our playbook. We're going to cat out, oh, I think I called this guy module template.yaml. You can name them again, anything you want. But this is like our installation routine. This is me describing state to Ansible. Ansible, this is what I need you to go make sure is set up on these three systems. In this case, Planet Express, right? That's the group name that maps to my inventory. So in case you were forgetting. There's the group name. Planet Express matches the group name right here. Okay. Uh, next, I see that we have a um, I see that we have a set of variables. Okay, and these are just variables. This would be a uh, we call this <laughs> in YAML they call it mapping. In like any other language, we'd say, oh, key value pairs, right? There's a key on the left that's going to be static, and there's a value on the right that can maybe change and be dynamic. So ship name is what I would expect to find in my template, and Bessie is the value that I want to fill in for ship name, just like ship type, engines, dark matter balls, and ship price and beans are all variable names. And what I want them to be replaced with is on the right here. If I look down at my tasks, this is what I want actually Ansible to do. So if I look here, I have a uh, name of my task. This is totally dynamic. This is just Zach came up with a name, configure the spaceship config file. 
The template is a module, and this represents a block of Python code that got installed on my system right here on this world that I'm trapped inside of right now. It got installed on this Ubuntu 16.04 system when I installed Ansible. If I wanted to know how powerful the template module was, all the parameters that could be set, you know, examples of how it's used, I go out to the Ansible documentation page. And that's as easy as hitting Google and typing Ansible space docs space template. It'll probably be the first search result. I already know how it works. We're just going to break down what we have here. Source and destination are parameters specific to template. I know that because of the white spacing, which is a you know, artifact, I guess, of, of YAML. That's, YAML's all about white spacing. In this case, the source is where the template is, you know, the file that I need filled out. I'm saying, hey, there's an incomplete document right here. This is on my local system. And the destination is where I want it to end up on the target machines. So let's go ahead and see that I have a template here. It'd be the last thing we didn't look at. Cat home student templates ship.cfg.j2. So you might be saying to yourself, what is J2? That stands for Jinja, Jinja template. And that's what you're looking here is Jinja templating. Anytime you see these double mustache brackets, close double mustache brackets, that means what is inside of me is a variable that must be replaced. And you're going, well, replaced with what? Uh, I don't know. Engines is a variable. We saw that right here. Engines, dark matter. So what's going to be what, what the, the resulting file we're going to end up with is not going to be this template. This isn't necessarily what gets placed on our remote systems, but a file that says engine type equals dark matter is what's going to get created. Uh, one that says sales price equals um, ship price in beans, ship price in beans two, the value of two will be filled in here. Now, this last one, anti-matter afterburner equals true, there's no variable there. That's just a hard-coded value. So this is pretty neat. We're seeing that we can describe inside of our playbook variable values, right, that are dynamic, that will be populated into a static template, and we're going to end up with this, you know, a, a very 